The earliest memory I have of my mom is her voice, I think, when I was three living in Canada. And I remember going backwards up the stairs um, because she told me to, but I was going really slowly because I was listening to her voice. And she has a really, she still talks this way, a very like strong, steady voice, like not not whiny at all, not slow, kind of certain. And she talks a lot with her hands, which I think I've adopted. <laughs> I think I talk like her. And sometimes I can tell when I'm talking like her. I'm like, that was a mom thing. Lots of old things in our grandma's house. like And like that old person smell that you can't really place. You don't really know what creates it. It's If it's just age or just like old liquor or something and like old furniture and just dusty things and like antiques um but that's also just like that also the baked in smells of whatever there they she's been cooking for 60 years in this room you know so it's just kind of all like wrapped into it um but yeah it's just filled with like old artifacts and like old things from our family's life and old photos of our mother when she was young and uh the old house that they used to live in when they all used to live together in the same house but we didn't we didn't know that house we just knew her apartment that she moved in after all the kids grew up during the day like our grandma would leave out the sheets and the blankets and the pillows and stuff and um you know she'd want us to make the bed but we'd have more fun just like building a fort around the bed and then you know, once dinner was over, she would say, like, okay, now you actually have to make the bed and it's to get ready to go to sleep. And there would still just be parts of the fort that would just be sort of flopped around. And, um, yeah, and then we'd, we'd make the bed around it. Our grandmother's, our grandmother's apartment was uh, this place that we could go to whenever our mother was working or just after school some days if things were busy around the house our mother would just sort of send us to our grandmother so we could kind of wind down or just like yeah any time that you know it was harder for our parents to look after us yeah we could just go over there and it wasn't the biggest place but it was like a second home i went to the garden of love and saw what i never had seen a chapel was built in the midst, where I used to play on the green. And the gates of this chapel were shut, and thou shalt not writ over the door. So I turned to the garden of love that so many sweet flowers bore. And I saw it was filled with graves, and tombstones where flowers should be, and priests in black gowns were walking their rounds and binding with briars my joys and desires. I went to the garden of love. I 
went to the garden of love. I went to the garden of love. I went to the garden of love. I went to the garden of love. I went to the garden of love. I saw it was filled with She's my grandmother. See, um, 
she has this like um short haircut but it's sort of um yeah she always had her hair short it's kind of strange she would dye it in these like weird colors like i don't know if it's common for everywhere else in the world but she would like dye her hair like these purple weird colors and stuff and i never understand that because it never it doesn't really look natural i think um like sometimes i see these like polish ladies in my neighborhood and they always have way too much like makeup in these like really strange colors and i'm like always thinking well everything looks fake on you <laughs> why are you doing this to yourself so i guess this is <laughs> Well, um, in this picture, she doesn't have um, any sort of strange hair color. It's her normal hair color. And, but she's wearing a purple shirt, which is kind of funny, mentioning that she usually like, dyes her hair purple. Is that your... So that's your grandmother's dog? Yeah, it was called Peter Pan. <laughs> but we would usually just call it Pan. And she would... Um, I'm not sure how, but if it... Whenever she brought it to... Um, the dog saloon, or like dog <laughs> dresser, hairdresser, she would sort of get um, Pen's hair with her back home, and she would sort of like make them into yarn and like knit from it. From the dog's hair? Yeah. <laughs> so she would have like scarves? Yeah. With the dog hair? Yeah. She would have this really absurd sort of relationship to what you could like use dog hair for. I mean, it's a poodle, so I'm not really sure how she came up with this idea. Because the camera was expensive and developing and getting prints was kind of luxury kind of things in those days. We only, like my father only took a camera when there were guests or something special and photograph us in front of his garden when there are lots of flowers and trees vibrant in the summer. Or sometimes we go to the stream and swim there and have an outdoor picnic. So it was very much uh, nature surrounding kind of pictures. And I don't know if you have an experience of being in the forest by yourself. When there's nobody else, you become more aware of your surroundings, the air, the smell. And have you ever touched the trees or hug them or climb up or just look at them? And particularly, did you ever look at the trees when there is a wind, gentle wind? and trees swagging. And the reason why I fear cross the trees because when I was young, I grew up in the countryside. I was surrounded by trees all the time. And of course, in that environment, I don't notice there are trees. I just see them all the time. But living in the city, it becomes much rare to see the tree.
qué lo compré? Porque pues ya ves ya ves cómo soy me a veces este con una cosa me apasiono. Entonces, ¿en algún momento te apasionó la fotografía? Ajá. ¿Y qué hacías para que mejorar en fotografía? Pues me ponía me ponía a estudiar ahí los conceptos y eso y intentaba hacer tomar las fotos de acuerdo a lo que decía el manual. O cuando iba a tomar las fotos, me acordaba lo que decía o, o compraba algunos rollos de acuerdo a lo que decía ahí, que porque no todos los rollos eran igual y que no tenían el mismo grano y eso, ya ves que antes eran, pues eran analógicos los, los rollos. Entonces seguías las reglas de cómo tomar buenas fotos. Ajá. ¿De alguna manera te estabas preparando como para ser de, como, de alguna manera un fotógrafo, no? Pues, este, sí, no profesional, pero sí quería... Sí quería pues guardar guardar esos recuerdos pues de una manera correcta. ¿Y esas fotos te gustan las que tomaste con la minolta? Sí, y nada más que a veces este ya a veces me sentía frustrado porque pues yo tomaba las fotos como yo creía, pero pues eso no dependía solo de mí, sino cuando yo iba a revelar los los rollos dependía del lugar donde los fuera a llevar como yo no sabía nada yo pensé que nada más era este, que los revelaran y ya pero pues había gente que no tenía cuidado y entonces este pues se echaba a perder prácticamente las fotos entonces hay, hay fotos que sientes que se perdieron de esa manera pues este no se perdieron o sea sí están ahí las fotos pero de muy mala calidad o sea están este, sobreexpuestas o los colores están muy feos o luego el, el papel donde las imprimían era de mala calidad alguna cosa no hacían bien pues a pesar de que pues vas a algún lugar y, y tú piensas que, que la cosa es automática porque sigue en un proceso automático pero pero pues hay un, algunos detalles que, que esta gente no tenía cuidado y entonces pues arruinaba las fotos. Mm. Y pues la verdad yo no sabía si eso tenía arreglo o no, para mí ya estaban echadas a perder. Mm. Y ahorita, ahorita en digital, ¿por qué ya no tomas tantas fotos? ¿Por qué ya no tomo fotos? Ajá. Porque, pues no, primero no tengo cámara, o sea, ya... ¿Pero por qué no compraste una? cámara y tendría yo que, que volver a, a tomar el gusto por hacerlo. Pero mucho del gusto por hacerlo eran ustedes, que estaban chicos y, y esas cosas. Ahorita ustedes ya crecieron, ya incluso ya se fueron y pues ya no... Como que ya no... No hay algo en mí que me diga, ah, pues voy a tomar fotos, ya no están aquí. Tendría que yo pensar en tomar fotos, pero otra cosa.
Yeah, I guess, well, I'm from a really huge family and I was the ninth of 10. And when I was young, the pictures weren't really organized. They were kind of in a bunch of different boxes. Um, and I remember always searching through the boxes, trying to find the ones that are from my time period or whatever. And I could never really find any of them. But then after my dad died last year, um, all of the pictures came out again, but in my mom's retirement, she had organized all of them and she organized them by each kid, mostly. There were like obviously overlap if two of us were in one picture, but um, so there was a whole book of pictures with me. Um, and then there were also some of me with my brothers and sisters. Like there was a story that they went on this vacation, but it was before I was born. But there's pictures of me actually on that vacation with them. I was only maybe a year old or something. So I guess I felt loved and there were a lot of cute pictures of me. I realized that I had sort of told myself this whole story of neglect, <laughs> of um, not really being wanted or something that um, in some way it was like inflected in my adult relationship with my parents. And then I think in the whole process of it, including those pictures, but also with my dad passing away, I realized how much uh, of a role I played in the relationship that I had with them, that it wasn't like a one, a unidirectional relationship. I remember flipping through um, one of my dad's, um, I guess it was a family album, but he doesn't really keep them, so I think my mom probably made it. We were, we were on our way to the exhibition, which is this big annual <clears throat> kind of circus thing that happens in Toronto, and our family goes every year, and it's around my birthday. And I remember my dad, weirdly enough, in this picture, he is totally clean shaven. He's no mustache and he always has a mustache. And so it's really, really strange for me to look. I think we were at Union Station, at least it looks like Union Station in my mind. And I think I can see the tracks in the shot, but I can't remember. There might have been tracks next to the cobblestones. But um, it was a really, really sunny day. Um, my parents divorced when I was four and, um, my father has always been a reluctant parent, maybe not reluctant, but <clears throat> some would say inconvenienced by parenting. And it's not that he doesn't love me. He does, but he's not there for me. So, you know, this was definitely a moment before my parents divorced and I guess it was something kind of like a time that's impossible to remember that you can only really imagine in photographs which is nice <laughs> y decidió tomar la foto justo cuando ella se toca el ojo que es lo más chistoso Me dijo que era una, una novia que se había ido a vivir a Italia, que era bastante lanzada. No creo, que, no creo que mi papá le haya contado esta historia a nadie más. Porque no creo que nadie más haya tenido el atrevimiento de hurgar en sus cosas personales. Me pregunto si le hará falta. Me pregunto si sabrá que esa foto ya no está en su estudio, sino que está aquí en Nueva York conmigo. Yo soy la que resguarda este recuerdo de alguna manera. O sea, depende de mí si este recuerdo quiere subsistir o no. Yo el día de mañana puedo romper y quemar esta foto. O sea, ya depende de mí. Entonces, de cierta manera, sí pienso que, que, que me pertenece de alguna manera y... 
¿no? O sea, yo soy la responsable de que esta foto siga existiendo. We had spent six weeks studying abroad together, um, and so saw each other every day, obviously uh, became really attached. And we had spent two days before I ended up leaving, because I left before he did. Um, we ended up spending the whole day together. We rented a car, we drove out to the country, and like, 
brought a picnic and just it was a really ideal day sunny um and we walked down this into this historic town and we're walking through all these streets and these little narrow passageways and um i wanted to to take his portrait and take his photograph but well it was clear that i had stronger feelings for him than he had for me and he would always photograph me but i could never fully photograph him in the moment i don't know i guess because it meant more to me or at least i thought i didn't and then i knew it was going to end i didn't maybe want to have these reminders of that period so I just remember questioning like do I love this person because this hurts a lot but if I if I really loved them then maybe I would know and I wouldn't be asking myself that question I would just know but the thought of leaving was still very painful um so every time that I would gear up to do it I would hesitate and stop so I ended up taking a bunch of photographs of him from behind um yo no tomo fotos yo casi no tomo fotos o sea yo no tomo fotos o sea no es, ese no es mi papel Sí, yo tomé la foto. Pero no me acuerdo de nada. Yo creo que tu papá se iba a bañar y te iba a meter, a, o te iba a meter a bañar a ti, o se iban a meter a bañar los dos. A lo mejor él trata de sacar algo, ropa tuya, porque ese es tu closet. Tú estás bien contenta, tú estás ahí riéndote. ¿No? ¿O qué estás haciendo? ¿Me estoy llorando? No, no estás llorando. Yo te veo riendo. Sí, te estás riendo, ¿no? ¿Estás llorando? Sí, ¿no? No. Mira bien. No, yo no te veo llorando. Si estás llorando, entonces tu papá te ha de haber hecho alguna de sus salvajadas, pero tú no eres de las que lloraban.
Thank you.